I'm Gordy Tepper, this is Check Around. We're out in the Gulf Islands today, and guess what? It's spectacular out here. And speaking of spectacular, by the way, look up on the hillside here. A brand new 6,300 square foot home. It is extremely special, and one of the very special things about it is it's heated by all the water you see around us. How does that work? Stick around, you'll find out. Okay, so how does the ocean heat a 6,300 square foot house? Well, you know what? I don't have a clue, but I bet Doug Lockhart from Lockhart Industries, you know how this works? How does it work? Well, the first law of thermodynamics is you can neither create nor destroy energy, you only move it from one point to another, so. You sound like a textbook. We uh, typically what we do is we take anywhere from six to five to six units of energy out of the ocean. We combine with one unit of energy from the utility, BC Hydro in this, in this instance, and we end up with seven units of energy, but we only paid for one. So consequently, we wipe out about 85 to 87 percent of a homeowner's heating bill. Wow, that would be a tremendous amount of money, especially in a house this size. Correct. Now, now I assume there are pipes or something that go out underwater to, to make this happen? Yeah, we have to access the heat out of the ocean so what we do is we typically run our piping down through the upper uh, the upland area through the riparian right away and then we go into the ocean I, I don't see the pipes here anywhere though no and that's one of our claims to fame is that uh, when we're putting in a, an environmentally sensitive system we don't want any blight on the landscape especially in the inner tidal area so in this area here you can see the the conduit for the piping the curving uh, rock type thing we correct right and it's it's all been manicured it's uh, concrete we obtained all the permits, uh, both from First Nations and also from the uh, Marine as well as the the uh, local government, and we made sure that we went in there and nice and neat and clean. And well, it couldn't be any more environmentally friendly. No, it's uh, it's pretty fantastic when you compare the fact that uh, we don't have any smokestacks on the house and we burn nothing. We just move units of energy that's already been paid for. So clean air all around. Clean air all around. I'd like to get up closer to the house and see a little bit more Super. of this. Come on, let's have a look. Doug, it's pretty easy to see why these folks uh, moved out to the island here. This is just a spectacular house. I, I can't get over the size of it, and I don't want to belabor a point, but at 6,300 square feet, uh, does your system heat everything, including the pool here? Correct. We heat the pool, we heat the hot tub, we heat the domestic hot water, and we also heat the house. But the fringe benefit of that is with the way that we designed it and coupled it with the ocean, we actually give them in the summer, or we give them free cooling instead of mechanical cooling. So there's no energy wasted to run a refrigeration system for the cooling. It's all as a, as a side benefit. Heating and air conditioning at the same time? At the same time. And, and uh, again, you're, you're able to get enough heat from the water the way your exchangers work? Correct, we threw the system online uh, for the pool when the pool was finished in uh, December in that cold spell that we had this year and or last year and uh, we heated up the pool in three days and never lost any temperature in the house and that was all heat that we took out of the ocean in December. Now all of my friends, everybody I know, let's put it that way, don't build houses this big. Uh, this type of system that you install is good for any size home I assume. Correct, we've we've done uh, houses anywhere from 800 square foot right up to 18,000 square feet It's and everything in between. And uh, it still saves, saves you the same amount of money in energy at the end? Correct, we're anywhere from 80 to 90% savings on, a, on an ocean coupled system. Is there a nuts and bolts room that we can see that makes all this work? Well, we have the Starship Enterprise where we uh, have all the equipment. By all means, let's go have okay, a look. Okay, beam me up. <laughs> right on. Well, this sort of is like the Starship Enterprise, but more like the engine room in here. So what are we looking at? Well, actually, it looks pretty complicated, but it's actually very simple. We have the two, I, I doubt that. <laughs> we have the two pumps back and behind here uh, that circulate the water down to the ocean and back again. Okay. This is where it enters into the so building. So this, this is the seawater coming in here? This is all the seawater. Well, it's actually the, the circulated water under the sea that's coming in, it's oh, fresh water. So it's not, not like ocean water? No, no, it's circulated water. This then goes overhead. It connects to these six heat pumps here. Mm -hmm. These six heat pumps here do all of the heating of the house, the main heating of the house. They also heat the water for the pool and the, and the hot tub. Now, now, just let me interrupt you for a second. Uh, I'm assuming in a normal size house, because this is not a normal size house, um, you probably wouldn't have this many, would you? Correct. You normally would have a unit basically about this size, uh -huh. and it would do both domestic hot water and it would also do your house heating. 
Over here on the uh, far right hand side over here we have two heat pumps there. Those are for heating the domestic hot water which of course feed into this tank which feeds into the electric hot water tank. So they are basically heating the domestic hot water at one quarter to one fifth the uh, cost that it would be electrically. So worst case scenario, there is an electric backup to all of this, but Correct. generally speaking, I gather it's not used much. We haven't, we fired it up and commissioned it to make sure everything worked, and then uh, we promptly shut it, shut it down so that uh, we didn't use it. And I understand that you're not the only genius, in fact, you have a couple other geniuses in here right now who, who make sure this works pretty accurately. Well, one of the things we're kind of noted for is making sure we save every last penny, and Boris and, and Tony, they're, they're pretending to be working and not listening. <laughs> they're, they're optimizing every, every watt that they can out of the pumps, because one of the other things that we incorporated in here, besides the free cooling that is done as a, as a backhand on the heat pumps, mm -hmm. is these frequency drive pumps. And all of the pumps- Better that's these electric pumps on the wall here? Correct. You see them, some of them working here, some of the heat pumps aren't working. And these pumps actually uh, only draw the amount of power that they need. So if one unit is on and it has to work hard, then it'll It'll circulate more water. If there's four units on, it'll speed up and slow down, which saves about 50% of the of the energy typically that you would use in uh, what we call parasitic pumping losses. It's very impressive. I mean, it's uh, it's efficient to the nth degree, really. Basically, that's one of the things that uh, um, Lockhart Industries takes a lot of time is ensuring that we. Uh, don't waste money in chasing rainbows, but we also make sure that the equipment that we have in is optimized to the point where we save the money, but we also don't end up uh, sacrificing or jeopardizing the equipment. Well, let's go back up to where you can actually see rainbows from rather than down here. Okay. You know, there's no other way to describe this home other than spectacular. And Tony, you're the architect, you designed it. Are you like a crazy person or what? <laughs> Someone once uh, pulled up to one of my houses and pulled down the window and said, are you on acid or what? Well, well seriously, <laughs> uh, is there any other house in the world that looks like this? I hope not, no. No, but I mean, uh, what was the, did you have some motivation for this style? Um, the really, uh, the idea was the context. Uh, the, the clients wanted it to be low key, and so we chose a rust that related to the arbutus. Uh, yeah. Now, now I don't know if it uh, came across in the stuff we've shot before, but the whole side of the house is steel clad and mm -hmm. rusted over. It's actually a, a mixture. It's uh, an alloy of copper and uh, steel. Okay. So well, I, I wasn't sure what it was, but it, whatever. It <laughs> begins to rust and stops rusting, so it stays this way and doesn't drip rust. Now, as far as the heating system goes, and I mean, it's a pretty elaborate one. This geo exchange program. Uh, do you have to make special accommodations to fit that in when you're designing the home? Not the geo exchange. It's pretty much all underground. You know, the, the pipes go into the water under the dock, and mm -hmm. so um, not so for that. But uh, we realised that we could use it for cooling, mm -hmm. and then we this was a, a part, part way through the project, so we had already designed all the structure. Yeah. And what we did then, we, we had to accommodate ducts for forced air into yeah. the system, and so it became really complicated to um, to put um, these tubes all the way through the building. So that was difficult for me. We were cutting holes through the webs of steel joists and so on. The building actually was prefabbed, so we, we bought it over on 23 trucks. That's what I hear, it was all yeah, put together here on yeah. the island. We bought it over, it was like um, D-Day, you know, six o'clock in the morning, <laughs> and the, the flat went down, all these trucks came off. I guess the bottom line, if you don't mind me interrupting you, is are, are you happy with the way it turned out? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's a mixture of the, the client and all of the team. It's, you know, it's not me, it's, it's not only my architectural team, but all the engineers, and, and of course, the client has a lot to do with it too. But you're going to take credit for it anyhow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you should. Thank you very much for this. Okay, thank you. Doug, have you ever worked on a home more unusual than this one? This is pretty much the most unique home that uh, we've ever worked on, yes. I think it's the most unique home I've ever seen before in my life. Now, uh, obviously, there's huge challenges uh, for putting the whole system in here to heat and cool it. Uh, is it this difficult with normal homes? And I'm sure the answer is no. No, we've done uh, homes of this size where we've actually retrofitted them, and uh, as long as it's planned out, uh, it's fairly easy to integrate in. One of the things that was uh, challenging here, but also very rewarding, was working with Dave Dandino of Gulf Islands Artisan Homes. Mm -hmm. He facilitated a lot of the uh, integration of the features and the equipment to allow us to be so efficient. As a homeowner myself, I'm thinking, well, this all sounds pretty nice, but would you have to totally rip my house apart to renovate it? No, that's one of the, 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 uh, the things that we love to do is seamlessly come in, transparently come in, and build the system into the home, whether it be the existing home or into a new structure. And 
Uh, typically with uh, anywhere from uh, this size of home to a 2100 square foot, you know, three bedroom home, we are typically anywhere from three to five, five to six year payback on the initial investment. So at the end of the life expectancy of the geo exchange system, you're looking at anywhere from 60 to $100,000 that you've uh, banked in the savings plus paid for the system. So in other words, graphically speaking, when you tell them what the price will be, they go, what? And then when you tell them how soon they'll get their money back, they go, oh. Well, that's <laughs> one of the analogies I like to use is it's, uh, it's like getting a, a very high-end car that gets about 185 miles to the gallon because you end up with all the luxury, the safety, the longevity, because they last anywhere from two to five times longer than a conventional heating system. But being that they run at one-sixth to one-tenth the, uh, the operating cost, they pay for themselves dramatically uh, quicker than a conventional system. And speaking of cars and, well, polluting, if you will, uh, the CO2 emission from the systems you put in is like negligible or, or zero. 90, approximately 94% of the, of the uh, power content uh, supplied in British Columbia is uh, green energy because it's water over a dam. Now with respect to that, uh, if you look at that component, we are saving uh, anywhere from 85 to 90 percent. So the CO2 component is virtually nil. In a home like this, uh, it was calculated out to be just a little under 60, around 58 tons of CO2 a year is what they're saving by using GeoExchange and just moving the heat from the ocean into the house. Pretty impressive. How would people find out more? You have a website, I bet. Correct. Blockart.ca uh, mm -hmm. is our website. and. Uh, uh, there's a number of uh, different articles on our website that allow people to go and have a look at GeoExchange, the benefits, the paybacks, these sort of things, and uh, then they can give us a call and, and we come and assess the system, their operation or their home, and see what we can do for them. Doug, thanks so much for doing this. Thank you very much.